So let's continue our discussion of the square root property. We're going to solve some equations that are slightly more complicated than the ones we saw in the last video. So let's take a look at this one. y squared plus 14 is equal to 2. So again, we want to isolate the square root, or I'm sorry, we want to isolate the perfect square on the left side, which is y squared. So subtracting 14 does that for us. We have y squared equals negative 12. So now that we have a perfect square on the left, we can remove the square and write plus or minus the square root of the right-hand side. So simplify the square root. Notice that the radicand is negative. So we're going to get a complex number. We're going to get i square root of 12. Further simplifying, Square root of 12 is 2 times square root of 3. And the standard way of writing this is y equals plus or minus 2i square root of 3. Now, to write my answer, I'm going to report these two numbers in the solution set. Negative 2i square root of 3 and two, positive 2i square root of 3. But we don't graph these two on a number line because they're not real numbers. They're complex numbers. So we don't need to represent this right now graphically. Let's take one more example with the square root property. This next example, we will have q minus 5, the quantity squared, plus 20, is equal to 4. So, again, we want to have a perfect square on the left side. We have a perfect square here. It's this quantity. So, we want to get rid of the 20. Subtract 20 on both sides. q minus 5 squared, 4 minus 20 is negative 16 then the perfect square, we can remove the square, get q minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 16. So q minus 5 equals plus or minus, this is i times square root of 16, so we get plus or minus 4i. So the two equations that this represents are q minus 5 equals negative 4i or q minus 5 is equal to 4i. To isolate the variable here, q, add 5 to both sides, get 5 minus 4i or q equals 5 plus 4i. Here the solutions are complex numbers so what you want to make sure that you write the solutions in standard form, um, both in the last step of your solution as well as your solution set. So here in the solution set, I have 5 minus 4i and 5 plus 4i. Okay. So now that we're comfortable with the square root property, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about completing the square. And this will allow us to solve equations that have a linear term instead of just a square term. Completing the square. So the equations that we have here are a little bit more general. So I'll demonstrate with an example. Let's say we have x squared plus 6x is equal to 0. Now our goal is to convert this equation to a perfect square on the left equals a number on the right. Because once we get there, we can then use the square root property like we've been doing in the other examples and then we can get our solutions 
So completing the square is the technique of converting the original equation into this equation where we have a perfect square of some quantity in the parentheses equals a number so that we can use the square root property after that. And the idea is you take the original equation you have x squared plus 6x leave some space equals 0 and we want to come up with a special number we can add here which we'll add to both sides that will allow us to factor the left side and once we factor it we will able to we will be able to get a perfect square on the left and a number on the right now I'm, I'm going to tell you what this number is for now that number is 9 and if you think about this a little bit x squared plus 6x plus 9 is the perfect square of x plus 3 and the right side 0 plus 9 is 9 there you go so we've converted the original problem into a perfect square on the left and a number on the right and now we can use the square root property so the square root property removes this square from the left and puts plus or minus the square root of 9 so x plus 3 equals plus or minus 3 and then the two equations will be x plus 3 equals negative 3 or x plus 3 equals 3 and the first equation gives x equals negative 6 the second equation gives x equals 0 and therefore my solution set will have the numbers negative 6 and 0 and these are real numbers so we can go ahead and show the solutions on a number line negative 6 0 so I'll shade these in we talked in the last video about symmetry and the point right in the middle is an important point that I want to mark and that's negative 3. Okay, so the real story here is how do we get that number 9 that we're adding to both sides? That's the key. That number, provided the leading term is 1 in front of the quadratic term, the x squared term, if that's the case, then coming up with that number 9 is very easy. You take the linear coefficient, which is 6, the coefficient of x, then you take half of that, and then you square it. So it's half the linear coefficient squared. So that's 3 squared, which is 9. And that's the and that's the magic number you have to add to both sides. That's going to turn the left side into a perfect square. So let's take a look at some examples. We're just going to think about what number to add to both sides. We're just going to think about completing the square. So in this example, we're going to determine the number that must be added to complete the square. Number one p squared plus 14p. So the number we want to add here is going to come from the linear coefficient, so that's 14, the coefficient of p. And the reason this works, again, because the leading term has a coefficient of 1. The p squared term has a coefficient of 1. So we take the linear term, though, divide it by 2, and then square the result. Okay, so half of 14 is 7 squared, and 7 squared is 49. So the number we want to add is 49. Next example. Let's do the same thing. In this problem, we have w squared minus 3w. 
So again, to think about what number to add, we want to make sure the leading quadratic term is 1, coefficient is 1. Then we take the linear term and its coefficient, which is negative 3. Okay, half of that, divide by 2, and then square it. So that would be 9 over 4. So the number we're adding here is 9 over 4. And this one will complete the square. But what do I mean by completing the square? Now, if I want to factor this, this factors into a perfect square. p plus 7 squared. And you know where the 7 comes from. And this next one factors again into a perfect square. And that is w minus 3 over 2, the quantity squared. And you know what the three, where the 3 over 2 comes from. So the 3 over 2 comes from the quantity half of the linear term. And the 7 comes from the quantity half of the linear term. So let's, let's apply this to solving a quadratic equation. So let's solve by completing the square. We're going to do two examples. Number one, we're going to do b squared plus 2b minus 8 is equal to 0. Now before you do completing the square, it's really important to make sure that the quadratic coefficient is 1, which in this case it is. The next thing we want to do is we want to leave a blank where we're going to add that special number. So I'm going to write this again, b squared plus 2b. I'm going to add 8 to both sides to make sure I have the space here to add the missing piece. So I'm going to add a number to both sides. Okay, now the linear term is 2. So we take that number, divide it by 2 to get half of it, and then square it. Half of 2 is 1, and 1 squared equals 1. So the number we're adding to both sides is 1. Now the left side factors into b plus 1. And again, that number 1 comes from the number before squaring, half of the linear term. So anyway, b plus 1 squared equals 8 plus 1, which is 9. And now we have what we want. We have a perfect square on the left and a number on the right. So now the square root principle kicks in. Remove the square, put plus or minus square root of 9, and then continue as before. The two equations. Isolate the variable. and report the solutions in the solution set. And we can also graph these solutions because they're real numbers on a number line. Here, we shade negative 4 and positive 2, and I always mark the middle piece. The middle number between these two is negative 1. It's the average of the two. Now let's take a look at one more example. Number two. z squared minus 8z plus 9 equals 0. The quadratic coefficient is 1. So I'm going to get rid of the plus 9 so that we can add the correct number. Subtract 9 on both sides, put negative 9 here, and then think about the number to add to both sides. So identify the linear coefficient, which is negative 8. So I take half of negative 8, square it, so that's negative 4 squared, 16.
and that's the number I add to both sides. Now the left side factors into a perfect square, and the perfect square is z minus 4, where the minus 4 comes from the number before we squared, half of the linear term. So that's z minus 4, the quantity squared, equals negative 9 plus 16 is 7. So now we have a perfect square on the left and a number on the right. The square root property says remove the square and put plus or minus square root of 7. So the two equations are z minus 4 equals negative square root of 7 and z minus 4 is equal to square root of 7. Isolate the variable. z equals 4 minus square root of 7 and z equals 4 plus square root of 7. And those are the two numbers in the solution set. So I'll report the solution set as 4 minus square root of 7 and 4 plus square root of 7. These are again real numbers, so I can mark them on the number line. So I'll mark 4 minus square root of 7 and 4 plus square root of 7, and I will mark these. And think about what number is right in the middle. You're taking 4 to taking away and adding the same quantity. The number in the middle is 4. 